Hello. Welcome. We're alive. We made it to another week of college basketball. Now, first, I, I messed up the other day um, talking about, you know, week one being recapped and everything like that. I probably should have, you know, made the recap video today and then, you know, and then, you know, I mean, you know, have the preview up for today as well, but that's okay. Because uh, we already had some more upsets yesterday. Um, Houston, great performance by them. I saw a little bit of that game late. Houston did not make a field goal in the last 12 minutes of the game. And they had blown out Texas Tech in that first half. And Texas Tech came back. And they, they still lost by 11 to Houston. Houston has moved up to number 10 in the country. Good for them. Richmond, they're now in the top 25. Um, they beat up on Kentucky yesterday. They beat up by 12. So it's a little bit surprising to see Kentucky look like that. Of course, you know, there's a lot of young guys I haven't really seen Kentucky play yet. But I will. And we'll talk about, you know, the events for this week. Because there are several. And one of them has already started. The Maui Invitational. This time, instead of in, you know, Hawaii... It's in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, some of the some of these preseason events I've completely forgotten about, completely you know missed, completely went over my head. Um, but my Texas Longhorns are playing at the Maui Invitational, and we just at, as of this recording right now, we just beat the Davidson Wildcats. We'll be taking on the winner of Indiana and Providence. Also in the tournament, Stanford. Alabama, UNLV, and the number six, I think they're, the, hold on, yeah, number 14 ranked North Carolina, and they'll be taking on UNLV later on tonight, um, my, my focus is on my horns, mostly, so I'm not gonna really care about the Maui Invitational too much, because, I mean, come on, but, Tomorrow, 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 the Champions Classic, Michigan State, number eight in the country, Duke, number six in the country, Kentucky, number 20 in the country after that loss, and it's number seven, Kansas, after their loss to Gonzaga, even though they did win another game. So I think the, the key for at least Kansas and Kentucky is how are these young guys for both these squads going to play? Because, um, I mean, there's been some iffy situations already. You know, Kansas already basically got blown out by Gonzaga. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kansas scored a lot of points in that game. But that game was over pretty much in the first half with, with the Bulldogs. Kentucky, on the other hand, I didn't see the game against Richmond yesterday. I did see a couple highlights of it, though. And, I mean, what is this team going to do? What is Mike Krzyzewski going to do, you know? You know, Coach K, what's he going to do to get these boys on track? You know, it, that's going to be a great game. Michigan State and Duke also going to be a good game. Both these teams I haven't seen yet either. Um, but, I mean, the... You know, the Blue Devils and the Spartans, there's always going to be, you know, something brewing there. You know, it's going to be a good it's going to be a good game. You know, the Champions Classic has produced some great games over the past few years. And those are the highlights for Tuesday. Wednesday is the Jimmy B Classic. And the Jimmy B Classic does not have one of the games listed on here. But it is Gonzaga, the number one team in the country, taking on West Virginia. Bob Huggins' defense, you know that that, that half-court defense of his is stout. How will Jalen Suggs and company go about their way, you know, against West Virginia this week? And West Virginia is one of those teams that is always in a stacked Big 12. I mean, the Big 12 is stacked this year. And just because Texas Tech lost on Sunday doesn't mean, you know, anything, you know. It, it doesn't mean too much right now. But later on down the line, it could mean something. Look, the Big 12 completely stacked as a conference. And speaking of the Big 12, the number two team in the country, Baylor, led by Jared Butler and Scott Drew, you know, head coach Scott Drew, 
anyway, takes on the number five team in the country, the Illinois Fighting Illini. Illinois is a team that I, you know, I haven't really seen yet either this year, but I'm going to see them on Wednesday night. It's going to be very interesting to see what Illinois can do to stop, you know, Baylor, because Baylor easily beat up on Washington in Las Vegas. Oh, man, I forget who else they played. Oh, yeah, they played Louisiana Lafayette in Las Vegas. Um, but Baylor looked very strong out there in Vegas country. And it all leads up to something great on Saturday. You know, Thursday night, there's, there's some games, but those really don't mean anything, including conference games. Yes, conference games are starting early. Arizona State has to take on Cal on a Thursday night. Conference play, conference play starts early. Most conferences are going to 20 games this year. And, you know, that's a good thing. I, I, you know, the schedules are going to be crazy. You know, there's not going to be a lot of non-conference opportunities. Of course, we know, you know the Ivy League has completely canceled their season already, so there's no non-conference opportunities there. Um, a couple of black schools have, post, have canceled their seasons, you know, as well that I know of. And, um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of, you know, weird things going on with the schedule this year. So there's going to be some games, and, you know, Speaking of the 20-game schedules and things like that, um, you know, obviously the Big 12 can't do it, but, I mean, the Big 12 is so strong that, you know, the 18 games we have is enough. I mean, Big East, they added UConn this year. They got the 20 games. Big 10's been at 20. Pac-12 has gone to 20 now. Um, ACC's been at 20. Mountain West, uh, Mountain I, I I've been meaning to talk about the Mountain West <laughs> going to 20 games. Um, I don't think San Diego State UNLV fans really like that idea, but, I mean, it, it has to happen. It has to happen at some point. And I, I've been an advocate for expanding conference games for the longest time because of how mid-majors tend to schedule. Uh, San Diego State's not one of those teams that can schedule strong, but... You know, sometimes they end up, and even this year, yeah, I get it. It's a weird year and everything, but you shouldn't have to pull from Division Two, Division Three NIAA schools, um, you know, to get your schedule done and across. You should be trying to pull, pull, pull up a black school. Though I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, a black school will come up and get a little payday to come up to your place or something like that. I'm not sure about the Mountain West Atlantic 10 Challenge or whatever, whatever challenge they're doing this year. Um, I don't think they're doing the challenges this year um, for the Mountain West at least because I think the A-10 Challenge got called off this year and everything like that. But, yeah, scheduling and stuff like that, going to be interesting to see how it goes, you know. Again, Schedules are fluid. You know, the GBB Classic was supposed to feature Tennessee, but, you know, taking on Gonzaga, but that's not happening, so West Virginia got subbed in instead. But, yeah, scheduling is going to be crazy, and it all culminates on Saturday with number one, Gonzaga, number two, Baylor, 11 a.m. CBS makes their debut for the season in college basketball, you already know it's about to be lit because they got a lot. They already have some games lined up, especially in a couple weeks. You know, on um, you know for the college football championship weekend and stuff like that. That's gonna, that's gonna be crazy, crazy weekend there. <laughs> um, yeah, Gonzaga and Baylor, two heavyweights fighting in a matchup. That's going to be very, very interesting. There's also. On Sunday, my um, Texas Longhorns is going to take on Villanova. So that'll be our fourth game of the week, probably, more than likely. And, uh, again, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Villanova, will, of course, lost the other day. And uh, I, I, we get to see that, I get to see that team for the first time this season, the Villanova Wildcats. There's some other games. There's some other non-conference games down the line, which is where I'll see Villanova again. 
um, hopefully, you know, on the 19th, I think, because I don't, I don't know when that game is going to happen on the 19th now, but it, it should happen thanks to the Big Ten moving their conference championship back up. Um, but, yeah, big, big week. Jimmy V, Champions Classic, you know, Maui Invitational, big time games, conference games starting, and college basketball is looking very interesting. So, again, sorry, I kind of messed up. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll, I'm trying to figure things out because everything is going on the fly right now for, you know, college basketball and stuff like that because I'm trying to get back into it because I wasn't really into it last year. I mean, I, I got some videos out for it late in the season, but, you know, Last year, just things just decided to, you know, mess up. You know, Corona Chan decided to mess everything up. And, yeah. So, I'll see you in about 30 minutes or so because we have another video coming out today for you. Talking about college football itself. And, you know, it's going to be an interesting Saturday all around. So, you know. Gonzaga Baylor on Saturday, games throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, especially for ranked versus ranked matchups. Gonna be fun. I'm loving it. And I'll talk to you guys again Monday. Um, hopefully sometime on Monday. It should be late on Monday. Or rather, not too late on Monday, but it'll be, you know, on a Monday that I'll talk to y'all again. Because there's going to be some big matchups, you know, the following Tuesday. So we'll see you then. Y'all take care.